Yes, the undisputed cruiserweight champion, the unified heavyweight champion of the world, and soon to be the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world? Well, maybe, but maybe not. But either way, we are about to find out, because only one man stands in his way. The mighty Tyson Fury, the sexiest athlete in the world. Yes, there he is. But who really is this man? What's his story? Well, let's have a little look, shall we? This is the incredible tale of the one and only Alexander Usyk. Strap yourselves in, catch me outside, how about that? Yes, so the heavyweight superstar of today was born in Sim... Sim in Ukraine on January the 17th in 1987, the same day as the mighty Muhammad Ali. He came from very humble beginnings in his early years, but at around six years old with the collapse of the Soviet Union, he and his family had to move away to Chernigiv Oblast, where things all of a sudden became very difficult financially and it took a big toll on the family. His father, a strict military man, kept Alexander on the straight and narrow in school where he achieved good grades and excelled in football with the dream of playing at the top one day. He always had this burning urge inside of him to become a real somebody. From when I was a little boy, I told my mother, I do not know why, but I told her that one day I will be very famous and I will have a helicopter and a very large house where we all will live. I remember that one day we were sitting in the kitchen. I told her, with these hands, I will do everything so you no longer have to work, my dear mother. <laughs> they laughed at me. Yes, incredible stuff. And funny enough, I said the same thing to my dear mum when I was a young boy. She laughed at off as well she never believed I could do it but all these years later and here we are and she was right she still got fuck all anyway things were so tough for the family that he had to stop playing football because they simply couldn't afford it so unfortunately the dream that Alexander envisioned had to be let go but then one day some of the local lads passed by and told him they were going to see a boxing trainer who had come to town there would be fights with boys from other districts and the chance to learn the sweet science so the 15 year old Yusik followed with intrigue then, in his first training session, he got beaten up so bad that he wasn't sure if he wanted to carry it on. But along with his father's influence, something inside him forced him to keep coming back. He had an urge to keep training and get revenge on those who were getting the better of him in the ring. And in time, he did just that. He went on to study physical culture at the LVIV State University, which entailed turning students into well-rounded athletes, putting the body through its paces daily, blood, sweat and tears. Unlike my university, they put me body through its paces in a different way with Spud's special brew and gear. Fucking blind and it was though. But yes, during this time he continued boxing and along the way he was guided by a great mentor, the father of another genius of the sport, Vasily Lomachenko. Papa Lomachenko taught both his son and Yusik intricate training methods incorporating things like juggling for hand-eye coordination as well as unusual footwork methods through dancing techniques that dramatically sharpened both men. Once he was competing regularly, Yusik racked up a number of amateur bouts beating familiar names such as Badu Jack and Derevenchenko, but losing to the likes of Baturbiev and Sean Porter at middleweight. His first attempt in major tournaments was a bronze medal in the European Championships at middleweight, but a return two years later saw him pick up gold. And then the medals just kept coming. He picked up gold in the Stranza Cup 2008 and silver in the World Cup, gold in the World Championships 2011 and the prestigious gold in the heavyweight division at the 2012 Olympic Games. The weight below his future foe, Anthony Joshua. Now one man who was watching in the crowd as he picked up the medal was Alexander Krasiuk, who was working with the Klitschko brothers K2 promotions at the time. Vitaly knew the potential of this standout talent and told Alexander to get Usyk signed up immediately, which he did. So after nearly 300 amateur bouts, it was time to take the plunge and immerse himself in the pro game. He started out in the cruiserweight division and sold out the venue for his first bout against Felipe Romero. Ended up with a TKO stoppage in five rounds, and this was how he intended to carry on. He was armed with the skill set of a seasoned pro, the footwork of a lightweight, and was oozing with confidence. I mean, to be fair, you'd have to be confident to pull off that haircut, wouldn't you? Fucking hell, that is a ballsy barnet, isn't it? Here, yeah, mate, take a seat down here. What you having then? Short back and sides? Nah, do you reckon you can make me look like there's a great big fucking oil leak on me head? That'd fucking do, wouldn't it? 
but yes, he followed up with eight straight knockout wins, defeating Daniel Brewer to pick up the WBO Intercontinental belt in the process. He said, yeah, come on, bruv, you it like me granny, your big ponytail fucking pillock. Is that all you got? Oh, bollocks, I shouldn't have given it a big and should I? Ah, oh, we love to see it, don't we? Usyk showed himself to be simply unmatched at this level. So it was time to challenge for his first world title against the very tough Polish cruiser Wakelawaki in his own backyard of all places. And after a 12-round schooling, Usyk realised every fighter's dream of being a world champion. But you bet your bum hole, he wasn't done there, was he? A dynamite performance followed against M. Chunu, knocking him out in the ninth, which led on to an absolute overwhelming of the very talented Michael Hunter. This fight in particular, portraying the relentlessness of Usyk in the later rounds, throwing a staggering 290 plus punches from rounds 10 to 12. Bloody hell, it must feel like you're fighting a fucking squid. This incredible work rate is created through the peak fitness that he achieves for each and every fight. He has been known to swim lengths in Olympic sized swimming pools for around five hours at a time. He enjoys performing sprinting drills on sand and his favorite workout to do is CrossFit. But none of that is quite as impressive as the cognitive training that he regularly shows off in open workouts, like the juggling, the amazing four coin trick, as well as sparring two fighters at once. He has always gone the extra mile. So then after the Hunter fight, he joined the World Super Series to compete for the Muhammad Ali Trophy. Fuck my Muhammad Ali trophy, nobody gives a fuck about it no more. Fair enough, Del Boy, but it is in fact quite prestigious since it brought together the best in their division. Marco Huck was chosen as the opener, and once again Usyk's engine and output was way too much for the German, finishing him off in the 10th round. It was on to the semi-final against the brutally tough but a little fucking nuts, Marius Bradis. Usyk away from home yet again, and this time the WBC world title was on the line. It turned out to be a memorable, absolute war, by far Usyk's toughest test to date, but he edged it with a mixed decision win to become two-time world champion. But then, it was the big one, the undisputed against IBF and WBA holder Murat Gassiev. Up for grabs was the trophy, all the belts, yes all the marbles. And like clockwork, Usyk's sensational work rate in the back end of the fight had Gassiev in a world of trouble. It was a clear victory for the Ukrainian and he was now undeniably the best cruiserweight on the planet. He summed up his overwhelming emotions in this speech. Alexander, tell us your immediate thoughts on having claimed every belt there is available in your weight class. Thanks God. Thanks God. Thanks God. Yeah, he didn't half go on, didn't he? Fucking hell. Now, during this time, there were rumbles of Usyk moving up in weight to test out the big boys. But just before he made the move, there was one man lurking in the shadows, the former WBC cruiserweight champion of the world, coming off two stellar heavyweight wins against David Hay. He thought about facing Deontay Wilder, but then he met him and saw how big he was, and he thought, yeah, fuck all that. So he decided to go back down. He deserved a crack at the undisputed for his final outing the one and only Tony Bellew. And Tony knew full well what he was up against. He is brilliant. He's fantastic. Well, I have no bad things to say about him, Fraser. He's a fantastic fighter. The most formidable cruiserweight that we have personally ever seen, barring Amanda Holyfield, I think. So the brilliance of Usyk turned out to be exactly what was expected by Tony. He took a shot at greatness and he gave it his all. Interestingly, he was ahead on the scorecards, but the knockout came in the usual Usyk fashion. A turning of the screw in the second half of the fight that put Bellew on the back foot and then the punches just kept on coming. Fair diddly to the heart of the double legend Scouser, but Usyk remained king of the division, with nothing left to achieve in this weight class anymore. So it was time to start packing on the pounds to go for greatness. The heavyweight venture began with a warm-up, a lower-level opponent in Chaz Witherspoon, who was ground down and retired in the seventh. Then it was on to the gatekeeper that always gained Derek Chisora behind closed doors. Dillboy showed Usyk's frame was a little more fragile in the big boy division as he was bullied 
bullied at times, pushed back for the majority of the fight, but the punch output was of course in Usyk's favour. It was a rather close one, but still a unanimous decision. However, many saw the vulnerabilities in the former cruiserweight, and as the Fury Joshua fight fell through, AJ needed an opponent. It was a fight he ultimately didn't need to take, but Usyk was desperate for the opportunity, and very few saw him being able to take the power of the mighty AJ. So September the 25th, 2021, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Usyk turned up to the presser looking like two thirds of a fucking traffic light and the size difference was apparent. But as the fight night came and the first bell rang, regardless of size, regardless of power, Usyk was completely elusive. And as much as AJ came in with a clear wrong game plan, Alexander put on an outstanding display. Almost looking like he was going to close the show with a knockout in the final 30 seconds. It's, it's oh, 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 it's oh, AJ, AJ is in the ropes. Do oh. you believe this? So he proved he did belong within the glamour division. Now the unified heavyweight champion of the world, yet another victory on his opponent's turf. And he had his sights on becoming two weight undisputed. But of course, rematch room had old AJ covered, didn't they? So it was off to Saudi for a monstrous payday and a chance at redemption for the Brit. And though AJ did come in this time with a more aggressive approach, Usyk was still too much to handle. Once again, showing an unmatched and ferocious engine from rounds 10 to 12 to confirm the judge's decision. Yes, okay, Joshua did have a wobbly moment afterwards and Yusuf looked like he didn't know what was fucking going on. Look at his face, he's like, fuck me, can I go home? But to be fair to AJ, he probably just felt like everyone else who'd been in the ring with this man. After the fight, they all thought the same thing. Fucking hell, what more can I do, bruv? He just keeps hitting me. It gets right on your fucking nerves. But anyway, yes, Usyk sought the undisputed fight with old Tyson Fury, but a calamity of events unfolded, leading to an underwhelming alternative against Dubois instead. He took Daniel to school for the whole nine rounds, apart from one controversial moment. You can have your own opinion on the low blow, but ultimately it was deemed a foul. So a victorious Usyk sailed off towards the Gypsy King, and the double excellent turkey sealed the deal for the most anticipated fight of our generation. I'd personally like to thank the double turkey for putting that fight on, but yes, here we are. Who emerges the king of this heavyweight era remains to be seen, but my Jacobs are moist and pert to see it. So big up Alexander Usyk, a double leg. Legend. The old podcast will be dropping on Wednesdays from now on because we want to get it to your double sexy self sooner. Toodaloo for now, Bosch.